Hi, I'm Tim. In this video, join me as I discuss my uh, design and building of a rectangular foam uh, flyer. Spoiler alert, it does not turn out well. Let's get to it. I've been flying radio model aircraft for years, and during that time I have designed uh, approx approximately 20 radio control model aircraft. Everything from uh, balsa original designs uh, to foam board flyers to modification of Guilo's kits. And each time you do that, you learn something new. And one of my more interesting designs, I think, was this 20-inch uh, square foam board flyer. I'll put a card up for it. Uh, free plans are available for this in the, in the description if you want to build it. But this is made completely out of 3 16th inch flat foam board covered with tape and decals with an electric motor in the front, receiver, and two servos, and it flies remarkably, remarkably well. This one flies so well, I'm using it as a trainer. It just is that easy to fly. It's three channels of control with the elevons, two servos, and the throttle. But the key thing I want to show you is the elevons back here. Elevons, of course, are a combination of elevators and ailerons. The elevator function for pitch, aileron function for roll. And to see what that looks like, you fly it just like the regular model. There's no difference with the controls. This is up, this is down, and to roll, this is left roll and right roll. And if you have nose up and you want to roll, it all happens for you through the magic of the mixing and the computer radios and the, um, and the uh, receiver and the two servos here. It flies fine. So let's take a quick look at a flight video of this and you'll see how well this airplane does fly. It's flying! The construction of these flat foam board models is very straightforward. This is a 30 inch long piece of 3 16th inch foam board for the wing. Uh, these are the uh, radio equipment that will be put in it. With a pen I just mark out the elevons. Probably a little bit bigger than I needed for this model. Lessons learned, but there they are. And then you just cut them out with an X-Acto X -Acto knife. Very important to use a metal straight edge to make sure all your lines are, are straight. With the elevons, you have to trim a little bit off the ends so they don't um, bind and also bevel the front end. The motor housing, very straightforward, plywood for the actual mount. The servos are glued in, the engine in place. Elevons, I just use uh, clear tape for the hinges. It works just fine. A little bit of down thrust, a little bit of right thrust for the motor seems to work well for these types of models. And notice a little bit of a gap so the elevon hinge can move freely. Here's a completed model, motor in place, balanced, center gravity is very important, 25% of the way back, and ready to give it a flight. With a complete sec a success of my square flyer, I mean the plane was one of the best flying airplanes I have. Slow flight, handling, orientation, it was just wonderful. It weighs about nine ounces, so if you crash it or you ding it, it just can't do much damage. If you do, you just build another one that you can build it in less than a day. I said, well, why don't we try to do one that's rectangular? Just let's see how that works. So <clears throat> I just didn't draw any plans. I just drew this up. From here to here is the 30 inches of the foam board. I decided to add another five inches extension uh, to the wings. I had a little uh, foam uh, doubler to put that on place, some, some uh, tape to hold everything in. The servos are the same installation. I tried to keep everything as far forward for the center of gravity. The center of gravity is still 25% back on the wing. That's a standard for what I use. It's a pretty big motor. It's a um, <clears throat> Park 370 motor, which provides plenty of thrust. And I thought that would have enough weight to keep everything where it should be on the center of gravity. And, and that was about right. I had to put the fin just a little bit further back to because uh, it just wasn't that much room with the radio compartment with the receiver and here are the elevons right in here so let's take a look at the flight video it's a short flight video it's about 20 seconds if that 
and you'll see what happens in the video. And I'll, I'll play the flight video twice so you can see it happen once, then you can see it happen again. So as an aircraft designer, it was interesting. The model kind of handled okay at the very beginning, but it was clear that it was very sensitive in pitch and led to a rapid, what we call a pilot-induced oscillation that just got worse over time. The wings folded and then the airplane crashed. So what can we take away from this? Well, first of all, when I look at the distance between the elevons and the front, this is a very short distance right here. That is going to lead to a very sensitive pitch input whenever these ailerons are, are, are actuated. So I think what would help to stabilize a little bit is if I just make the rectangle a little bit wider. I think that would have a stabilizing effect on the model. The other thing is the wings are fairly long. It was a weak point here where the wing failed because I had cut in this far for the, ele for the elevon, and this is just where a lot of force is concentrated. So what you can do to fix that is add a spar. And if I add a foam board spar, maybe an inch long out to about here, maybe double it up on the inner one, I think that will make the wing strong enough for flight. The other thing is, <clears throat> I probably had a little bit of too much power for that initial flight. That contributed to the pilot-induced oscillation. The other thing I know for sure, I had way too much elevon control. The elevon control, you saw how extreme that was for the square flyer. That was fine for the square flyer because it had a longer distance from the elevon to the front of the model, 20 inches. This one is about 12 inches, so what I'm going to do is to reduce the con control throw of both elevons on the computer radio. So instead of going up this much, they just go up maybe a third of the amount. So it's just a less input because it's going to be closer to avoid that twitchy moment. So I'm not giving up yet. I'm going to try it again. We'll put in the wing spar on the top and a wing spar on the bottom to make sure the wings are beefed up. Reduce the throw of the elevons. To make it longer, my, my other design input, I have to build a new wing. We're just going to try this to see how it works. And that's one of the advantages of RC design, trying an idea, see what works. The foam board is a wonderful medium to do that on because it's so inexpensive that you just, if you make a mistake, it's only a couple of dollars. It's not like you've invested this huge amount in a model airplane. So that's the plan. It was a fun experiment to go from the square to the rectangle. It crashed. That's a real good reason to have somebody taking videos of these flights so you can study it afterwards. We'll make some changes and see if we can have success the second time around at the RC field. Thanks again for watching this video. If I have success for the second iteration of this aircraft, you'll see the video on it and we'll stand by for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm.